I suppose the most extraordinary thing about living in Queensland is that Joe Bajolke Peterson has such immense power that he, that he can even change the chronology of the years. I mean, after 1967, you'd think that we'd have a whole decade leading up to 1977 and so on, but it appears that what you do is that after you get tired of 1976, you just change the numbers around and make it 1967 again. So here we are in the same kind of numbers that we began to be in in the beginning of 1967, contemplating the same kind of action that in 1967 led to the virtual displacement of the university from the St. Lucia campus into town to a battle with the police in Roma Street. Now, I don't suppose there are any of us who went through that who particularly relished the idea of having another battle with the police in Roma Street. And God said that that won't happen. But it seems to me that what we must confront is the fact that we're now facing a situation that is even more potentially provocative than the situation that we faced then. The reason why there are so many people in this forum today, when for the last 10 years there have been about one-tenth of this number in the forum, is that we're faced again with what has continued to be the basic issue in Queensland politics, uh, along with all the other issues that, 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 are germ that are germane to Australian politics, and that is the issue of civil liberties. In 1967, it was simply the misuse of existing traffic regulations that is their discriminatory use, not for the purpose of regulating traffic, but a discriminatory use against certain people who demonstrated politically rather than others. There'll be many people in this crowd who remember the massive demonstrations to greet Lyndon Baines Johnson when he came here at the height of the Vietnam War. The number of people who blocked uh, traffic, the number of people who held up placards welcoming him. There was no invoking of the traffic regulations against those people, but when small bands of 10 and 20 people tried to march from the university, they were invariably met by rather more police. And on one occasion, there were more people arrested than were actually in, uh, in the demonstration itself. Now, it was that, it was that, the threat to the liberties of those people, which led to a movement so well organized that in a very short space of time, it took 4,000 people marching on the road out of this university and about 3,000 people walking on the street beside them so that we had 7,000 people in, uh, in the, the inner city area confronting the police. Now, the point I want to make is simply this, that whether we decide to march tomorrow or not seems to me not to be uh, the decisive issue at the moment. In fact, I think it would be an error to march out of this university in relatively small numbers, even if they amounted to a thousand people, to join the demonstration in town. I think it would be a good idea for people to go there individually to the rally of trade unionists to uh, show our solidarity with the Zappa case and to discuss this issue, the threat to civil liberties further in the park. But what I think is even more important than either of those things is to begin now to organize so that within two or three weeks' time, we have an absolutely massive demonstration and an absolutely massive march that doesn't involve simply a crowd of angry students, that doesn't involve simply a crowd of the people that Joe Bajolke Peterson likes to call communists and their dupes, but that involves a wide cross-section of people gathered and structured by representative organizations so that we tap the real anger that does exist and that was manifested even in such an organ of conservative opinion as the Courier Mail this morning. That is, I think that the way out of this is to realize what Bajolke Peterson's doing. He hasn't pulled this, in by, pulled this on by accident at this time. It's got clear electoral uh, advantages for him if he can show himself to be victorious on the law and order issue against a number of sporadic, ill-conceived, precipitate attempts by various uh, sections of the community that he can organize, that, that he can uh, characterize as troublemakers. Now, he's got a number of these potential events coming up. He knows that the anti-uranium movement is about to engage in de demonstration activity in late September and in late October. He knows that the Zaffa case is going to be seen as a crucial issue of trade union rights. He knows that there are possibilities of further demonstrations on Timor. He knows that women have been active. He knows that there are all these groups. The blacks have been particularly harassed by the police in a completely scandalous fashion in recent weeks. He knows that there are all these people who've got legitimate grievances, and at any time, in an uncoordinated way, they might act in the streets, and they will be, they will be trodden upon by the police. Now, what I'm suggesting to you is that we take these uh, uncoordinated actions and we coordinate them. What I'm suggesting to you 
is that we rob Bajelki Peterson of the electoral advantage which will enable him to intensify the reactionary regime that he's presently brought about in Queensland by exploiting the rifts within his ranks. Now a Tasmanian Liberal uh, just yesterday denounced Bajelki Peterson and wants the Tasmanian Parliament to do the same. And I'm sure there are many Liberals in the state of Queensland who feel the same way because what he is assaulting at the moment, and quite provocatively, is not something that's dear only to the hearts of those of us who want to bring about a socialist Australia. He's assaulting something that's dear to those people who want opinion to be respected, who want the free flow of information, who want all those things that were fought for, not in 1877, but in 1777 and in 1789. He wants to, to roll the clock back to the times before the French Revolution, before the Declaration, or the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now, on a platform such as that, one can gather a really massive front of people who are willing to act. So what I'm suggesting is not that we bring about even a strategy that will try to get the Labor Party to have more than a cricket team, to have, for example, a rugby union team in Parliament. I don't think we should envisage our activity in that way, but I think we should directly address ourselves to all those organize, organizations in society that have some interest in civil liberties, which means setting up, and what my concrete suggestion to this body is that out of this meeting, we set up a civil liberties coordinating committee, and that civil liberties coordinating committee begin to operate with uh, financial support of everybody at this meeting, that we immediately uh, try to, to, to make ourselves resourceful financially and organizationally, so that we go into an immediate process of contacting a whole list of organizations. The greater the list of organizations, the better. And just to, to mention some examples for a beginning, I think that we should make every attempt to contact as many trade unions as we can, to contact the Civil Liberties Union, and uh, Derek Fielding himself will be speaking, uh, I gather along somewhat similar lines later on, that we contact all the Christian groups. Remember that one of the features of the 1967 march was the massive participation of the Newman Society and the Student Christian Movement and the Students' Union that we contact all those uh, Christian groups, that we contact all uh, the black, the, the groups that represent the cause of the black people, all the different uh, women's groups across the whole spectrum from the women's electoral lobby uh, through to the separatist lesbians, that we, that, that we contact uh, all of the uh, left-wing groups and that we contact all the Christian radical groups. Now with uh, secure contacts with all these groups, uh, carried out over a period of about a week to call a meeting of all the representatives of the, those organizations to speak to another rally of this size and, and, of a, and of a larger size and incorporating not only university students on this campus but other people invited onto this campus next week and that we hold that rally not in the forum area but in the great court where the last great rally was held uh, some seven or eight years ago and that we put to that meeting the, the prosecution of a plan of seeking a permit as soon as possible, and I'd suggest that the permit be sought no later than uh, a week or ten days' time, that we seek that permit, and if the permit is rejected, we appeal against the rejection, and then on a certain given date, well within the time which is available for the granting of a permit, whether we have a permit or not, we march in an organised and non-violent fashion, even if you like, with organised marshals, so that the jockey Peterson will have to confront something like a crowd of 10,000 people now, it seems to me that that's the only circumstances in which it will turn to his electoral disadvantage and to the advantage of the cause of civil liberties, because only a totally massive, non-violent crowd drawn from all sectors of opinion and from all classes will confront the Queensland police with the option of doing something that's obviously an anti-popular action uh, and an action that will be repudiated in every state of Australia and that brings up the question of seeking through this coordinating committee to have marches in solidarity in every other state. And let's not uh, neglect uh, this issue which is being granted to it. It's an issue that can be exploited in a way that very few other issues at the moment in Queensland can be exploited. And within two weeks, I think we could organise to have tens of thousands of people on the street, not only in Queensland, but in solidarity with us in the other states. So what I'm suggesting is that we apply for a permit that if the permit is not granted, then we march. And let's see whether the police will be willing to confront a crowd of 10,000 people drawn from every rank of professions, every occupation, every class, and every range of opinion in Queensland. It's my betting that they won't, and that for the first time, the jockey Peterson will be slapped in the face, if not kicked in the ass.